Welcome back to Kevin's Trooper channel. This is the channel where we do all types of DIY projects for overlanding and off-roading. So if you like that kind of thing, hit the subscribe button and join our great community of guys that we have here that watch this channel every single week. And today, I have decided to try to do something about this mess behind me. And the first project is to install an air reel. So it should be a good time. It's taken me all morning to gather all of the equipment and the little connections and pieces that I need. I think I've been to Northern Tools once and the hardware store twice to try to get everything that I need to put this together. I've built a little bracket to install this on because believe it or not, it didn't come with one. I thought this would have some kind of little bracket to screw it to the wall. It doesn't. So I made one out of angle iron. We've got it painted up. It's drying now. I'll show you guys that in a minute. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the bracket and this on the wall and then we'll run the hose up to the reel. So let's get started. All right guys, where we're at right now is I have made this template of the mounting bracket for the air uh, hose reel. And my original plan was I was going to put these in the holes that I've pre-drilled in that shelf. I was going to drive this down into the wood and then put my nuts on the bottom. But what I'm afraid of is I'm afraid that this square piece on these flathead bolts are just going to strip out in that, in that shelf because I bought nylock nuts to put on there and they're pretty stiff. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to run them down one time just to loosen that nylock up. It's going to make them a little easier to put on and I think it will also prevent this from stripping out in the wood. So my plan was I was just going to catch the corner of this bolt here and I was just going to run that nylock nut down one time <clears throat> with my impact just to make it a little bit easier to put on there. There we go. And we'll do the next one. And you know, my local hardware store never has the right bolts in the right bins. And, and I always end up grabbing something wrong. They had one nut that wasn't nylock. That kind of stuff just drives me crazy. If I go back after a while, I'll get another nylock one. If not, I'll just put that one in the way it is. It's not that big a deal. That kind of stuff just kills me though. All right, so I think that broke our nuts in just a little bit. Enough that it's not gonna strip out this, this square piece in the wood. I, I, I have a shelf up there and I didn't really want a bolt head or anything sticking up, so I thought this would be a better idea. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do just put my bolts through. That reel is heavy. The hard part about this is how am I going to hold that up there and get those nuts on by myself. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not. Okay, that helped some. What we did was we pulled a little bit of the hose off of it to make it a little bit lighter. Cinch them down. All right, let me see my hammer, buddy. Okay, the um, soft brass one. Yep. Yeah, let's 
hope that holds. Here you go. Yes. there is I had my 2x12 shelf that I had a hole drilled with this bolt going through it and exactly what I had expected was going to happen with those nylock nuts as I began to tighten that nut up this square at the bottom started stripping in the wood and just made a circle in there so I couldn't get my nut to tighten the solution that I came up with was I took my vice grip and grabbed the top of this bolt just enough that I could get that nylock nut to cinch up and it's cinched right down and it's perfectly tight so we're ready to move on okay guys this is the bracket that I built to hold my filter like so so this filter although this didn't come with a bracket which I was really aggravated about it does have four holes in the top of it that are threaded and my plan is to drill drill out this piece of angle iron and I'll put the screws to hold this just like so and then I can run my hoses and we'll be ready to go with that so the next thing I have to do is I have to figure out what distance I need these holes apart so that I can properly drill this piece of angle iron. I decided to put my bolts or my screws that I went and bought down in the holes and then I can take a template and lay it like this and trace around those screws and that will show me my bolt pattern to drill into my piece of angle iron. The center of those four holes should be my bolt pattern. Oh you know what though? It's not exactly square. It's not the same distance here as it is like this. I'm so glad I noticed that. I believe that's going to work. All right, let's drill this out and see what we got. And let's see if we got this pretty close. I got several lengths of these four millimeter screws because I just wasn't sure how long I was going to want them. I think we should try the shortest ones first. And I did get some little washers to go on there as well. And these are my medium length ones and it looks like that's the ones we're going to need. That's going to be perfect. And that's what we'll have on top. And that's what we're left with, guys, right there. That is going to be how the filter sits on the wall. Now I'm going to pull this back out. And then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to mount this to the wall. And where I'm going to mount it to the wall. So what I'm going to do is put me two holes in here and that way I can find a stud. Ah. It is time for me to buy a new set of drill bits. My drill bits are all getting very raggedy. Of course, as you see, I'm not exactly easy on my drill bits either. So this will go in the stud of the wall and my filter will mount right here. All right, here we are. We're gonna mount our bracket just like so. I've got a level line here on the wall, but we're gonna mount this 
just like that. And my air hose will come around here into my filter. And there we go. Now I'm gonna start my four screws that we designed in there. Now this is just a test fit. I'm gonna hook my hose up first to make it easy. I think that filter location and that design is gonna work out great. I'm super happy with that. I fabricated a little piece of angle iron and drilled my holes and you know this thing should have came with that bracket, but it didn't, so I made one. I love fabricating stuff like that. Next step is that we are going to install our hose onto our filter on each side and we'll continue putting this thing together. Okay, this is going to be our feed line in. You can see it says in right there on it. So I'm going to take just a little small amount of thread tape. And I'm going to try to go just a little bit more because I don't want to have to take any of this apart and fix any leaks. I want to try to get it perfect the first time. I also don't want to break it. So there is my air hose in. Alright guys, here's where we're at. We have the bracket for the filter installed. We have the line from the air compressor into the filter finished. And the next step is we're going to run the line from the filter up to the reel. Now, when I had originally purchased this, they had sold me this 10 foot section of line to go up and do that. But I realized this is quarter inch line. I don't really want to run quarter inch line. I don't want anything that's going to cut off my airflow, my volume of air. Air pressure and volume of air are two different things. An impact, a half inch impact can require six CFMs in order to run it to its full strength. Any, anywhere you choke that air off and the longer that line is, the more reduction in that CFMs you're going to get. If it were up to me, I would run a half inch, much less a quarter. So I went to my local hardware store and I picked up this Craftsman 3 8 inch hose. But of course, all they had were 50 feet. So I'm going to cut it and I'm going to put in one of these inserts that's going to allow us to make this the length that we need. I'm going to put some hose clamps and this in and that way we'll make a custom hose that's going to work. I would rather buy a hose and cut it, almost kind of ruin it, I guess I could use the other side for something, than run a quarter of an inch and get this whole thing done and have to change it out because I don't have the CFMs that I need. So we're going to build the hose and then I'm going to go get some uh, retainers so that we can screw that hose to the wall and retain it in the wall in the direction that we want before we actually measure how far we want this. So I'm going to run back to the hardware store, third time today, and then when I get back we're going to measure this hose and we'll cut it and we'll get this thing up. Now because there's a larger thread on this, I have to use this reduction to get me down to a 3 8 I switched thread tapes. That thread tape from that other place was very cheap. You wouldn't think thread tape would make that much of a difference, but it absolutely did. Eh, I'm going to have to get something else to hold this piece in the back. You just got to love vice grips. Let's try that. There are formulas that you can find online about how much CFMs you're going to lose as you drop down these sizes and work on these different lines. And that should work. All right. Now 
Now the reason I'm using vice grips on this part right here, guys, I had a wrench on here on the other side and the brass actually rounded out. And there we go. Now the next step is we're gonna mount the hose to the wall with some of these electrician's clips that's designed for conduit. And that's gonna keep it nice and sucked up against the wall where it won't flop around. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, now that we have that part done, we can put our filter in and connect our two hoses. Okay, so now I've put my insert, my brass insert into my hose with a hose clamp and I've screwed it into my filter and the next step is to put the filter onto the bracket and we will be almost done with this project. I bumped the air compressor button with my leg. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of my bracket that I made here. Well, that Creedon I made. All right, that is sturdy. Now all we have to do is to connect our other end onto here. And this is what the final product looks like. We ran our red hose up to our filter and then we made our bracket for our filter and we run our black hose up onto the shelf and there is our new reel. Well guys, I've got 100 PSI on the system and there's not a single leak. I don't hear any air coming out of anywhere. And look how nice this is. I can use it and when I'm done, it's out of the way. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join our great community of guys that we have here that watch my videos every single week and give me a thumbs up why because you know it means a lot to me thank you guys we'll see you in the next video